Brands Hatch was the venue for round four of the Dunlop Endurance Championship as the drivers and teams of Britcar prepared for the second race of the day. The first encounter had been won by overall championship leaders Danny Harrison and Jem Hepworth in their VR Motorsport Praga R1T, ahead of the sister car of Jack Fabby and Gary Townsend. With the overall results of the first race setting the grid for the second, it was Hepworth who led the field out of Clark Curve, ready to take the rolling start. As the lights went out, the 60-minute race got underway and Fabi, in the blue Praga, went straight on the attack. A terrific start as he fired himself around the outside of Paddock Hill Bend and into the lead. Just behind, Martin Compton had moved the normally aspirated Praga into third place ahead of the Veluga Porsche of Adam Hatfield. Meanwhile, a sister car was stranded in the garage while the CJJ Motorsport with Veluga team tried to get Sean Doyle's Cayman fired up. And Charles Lamb had started from the pit lane in the Class 2 Moss Motorsport BMW. By the end of the opening lap, Fabi had established a one-second lead over Hepworth, while Hatfield honed in on Compton, the Class 3 leader reclaiming his place inside the overall top three. The Porsche with more straight-line speed, but the Praga is an agile, high-downforce car and seemed glued to the tarmac through the high-speed turn. Compton using the Praga's performance to slingshot back alongside Hatfield and immediately regain the position into Druids. Running just behind the yellow SG Racing Porsche 997 of Mark Cunningham, who almost took advantage of their battle when he got alongside Hatfield into Graham Hill Bend. Having joined the race late, Sean Doyle was on a mission to recover lost laps and immediately started munstering Jonathan Evans and the CRH Racing BMW. Cunningham was also applying the pressure and got his reward into McLaren as Hatfield ran wide and he moved up to fourth place and the Class 3 lead. Following engine repairs, Nathan Wells was another one joining the race late, five laps down in the Digiplat Racing BMW. Up at Druids, a spin for Marcus Vivian in the Reflex Racing Ligier. Meanwhile, Fabi continued to extend his lead over Hepworth as the Class 1 Pragas pulled clear of the rest of the field. But VR Motorsport's stranglehold on the top three positions was about to be broken as Mark Cunningham charged past Martin Compton along the Brabham Strait. Once again, Compton used the Praga's downforce advantage through Paddock Hill and the two ran nose to tail up Hellwoods Hill. Hatfield just a few tenths behind in the Veluga Porsche. This time, though, Compton couldn't find a way back through at Druids. Then the race had to be stopped after 20 minutes, following an incident coming onto the straight, which saw Charles Lamb's BMW spear into the pit wall and Jim Hepworth's second-place Praga sideways across the track. Thankfully, Lamb was quickly out of the Moss Motorsport machine, and Hepworth also avoided any injury. In fact, the Praga had only suffered minor damage, and following a brief spell in the VR Motorsport garage, it became apparent that Hepworth would be able to join in for the restart, albeit from the back of the field. Unfortunately for Moss Motorsport, however, the BMW's day was done. The restarted race would run for a duration of 30 minutes, with the cars starting in the positions they ran in before the red flags were brought out. With Cunningham now on the front row, the Porsche challenged the leading Praga into Turn 1, but Fabi held him off. The pair followed by Hatfield, Compton and the Class 4 leading Seat of Martin Byford. On board the BMW of Nathan Wells and up ahead, the Porsche of Sean Doyle was in the gravel trap after running wide on the exit to Paddock Hill. The big advantage of the race stoppage for Wells, with the counter set back to zero, he and everyone else were now back on the lead lap. Enjoying one of his trademark first lap charges was Marcus Fothergill in the white bespoke car's Porsche. This move on the Team Brit Aston Martin of Aaron Morgan meant that he'd already climbed from 19th to 8th. Meanwhile, a dusty Porsche came in after Sean Doyle's voyage through the gravel trap. This replay from his onboard camera revealing that he'd made an unbelievable start, charging past no fewer than six cars on the way into the first corner. Huge commitment and bravery, but he just ran out of road on the exit and in the end did well to get through the gravel trap and back into the race. Just three laps into the restart and reigning champions SB Race Engineering were the first to make a mandatory stop. And despite his off, or maybe because of it, Doyle was once again refusing to hang around. An impressive move under braking to move him ahead of Class 4 rival Nathan Wells. The race leader now had a 10-second advantage over the Cunningham Porsche, as Jack Fabby tried to build as big a cushion as he could before handing over to teammate Gary Townsend. Cunningham, meanwhile, had been unable to shake off Hatfield. The two Porsches split by just eight-tenths of a second as they battled for second place and the Class 3 lead. 
As Compton pitted the Class 2 leading Praga, Class 4 leader Martin Byford moved up to fourth place overall in the BPM Motorsport Seat. Another giant killing drive from the former British touring car racer. The Class 4 win in race one had gone to CRH Racing on their debut. Tom Bradshaw now taking over the BMW from Jonathan Evans. And after getting back behind the wheel of the number 85 Praga, Jem Hepworth was also in. Danny Harrison poised to see what he could do in the remaining time. Meanwhile, the Porsche of Doyle and the BMW of Wales continued to work their way through the order. Their next target, the Corton and Miller Seat of William Caswell and Mark Kemp, also competing in what was a very strong Class 4 entry. With a good exit from Clearways, Doyle closed up to the Seat and moved into the top 10 for the first time in the race. Once everyone had completed their pit stops, Danny Harrison had emerged in third place, 22 seconds behind the race leader. Five laps later, he'd got the gap down to 11 seconds and was flying after the Ferrari of Andy Schultz. By certes, Harrison was onto the tail of the 488, and by the time they turned into McLaren, he was through to second place. Schultz giving him room as he pursued a Class 2 victory, while Harrison had just over 10 minutes to try to catch the leader. Class 4 leader Ash Woodman ran fourth in the Seat he'd taken over from Martin Byford. And there was a terrific battle for fifth place. Johnny McGregor slicing past Peter Cunningham into Surtees, also poised to pounce Benji Hetherington in the Veluga Porsche. Cunningham held the inside line for McLaren, so Hetherington flung himself around the outside. The move paid off, and he was promptly followed by Warren McKinley in the Praga. Nicole Drought had taken over the number 718 CJJ Motorsport with Beluga Racing Porsche from Sean Doyle and was running in second place in Class 4, but lost a place to former BTCC racer Luke Davenport as he moved the Ligier ahead at Druids. A line was then stolen by the team Brit Aston Martin, now driven by Bobby Trundley, who was enjoying a sensational Brit car debut and was now up to third in class. Up at the front, Gary Townsend was pushing hard, but his lead was being reduced by around two and a half seconds per lap, as Harrison relentlessly worked his way through the traffic. Benji Hetherington was also on the attack, overtaking McGregor for fifth place at Graham Hill Bend. And as the Tyrannis ran wide, McKinley tried his luck coming onto the Cooper Strait. They were all catching Woodman Sayat, Hetherington now leading the charge, while McGregor had managed to fend off McKinley for sixth as they emerged through Surtees. Fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh were now covered by just over two seconds and with Ollie Hancock's Digiplatz BMW almost with them in eighth place. As McKinley put pressure on McGregor, Hetherington used the extra horsepower of his Class 3 Porsche to drive around Woodman Seat and into fourth place overall. The Tyrannis was also through as they arrived at Paddock Hill. Having slipped back to sixth in her category, Nicole Dratt was now busy trying to fend off the 2019 Class 4 champion Tim Docker in the TD Motorsport VW. There was also an entertaining scrap between Nick Scott Dickerson in the Team Hard Porsche 911 and Adam and Callum Thompson, a welcome addition in the eye-catching Jaguar F-Type. Back on board with Croft class winner Nicole Drought, heading up to Druids on the brakes and threw down the inside for Tim Docker, who had taken his golf to second place overall in last year's Dunlop Endurance Championship. Still running fourth, Benji Hetherington was now coming up to lap another Porsche, that of Dave Bennett. But as he went down the inside into McLaren, disaster. The pair touched wheels, Bennett span and sent Hetherington onto the grass. McGregor, Hancock and McKinley all came past as Hetherington dove for the pit lane with damage. A replay of the incident from Ollie Hancock's perspective in the BMW. With six minutes remaining, Harrison had closed the gap to Townsend and the pair exited Clearways nose to tail in the battle for the overall race lead. As they blasted onto the Brabham straight, Harrison was still more than a car length back. But as they came up to lap Peter Ersek's Porsche, he spied an opportunity, picked the right line and charged past Townsend into Paddock Hill Bend. Class 2 leader Andy Schultz was also closing in rapidly on Townsend for what looked like being a grandstand finish. A lap down, the battle for fourth place was now raging between Johnny McGregor and Ollie Hancock, who led Class 4. The pair had been glued together for several laps, but Hancock finally got his chance on the run-up to Druids. A perfectly executed move to put the Digiplat Racing BMW ahead, where it would stay until the chequered flag. The Reflex Racing Ligier would finish second in Class 4 and seventh overall, with the Team Brit Aston eighth and completing the class podium. With the Veluga Porsche of Hetherington and Hatfield out of the running, Colin Souter had now moved his Ferrari 488 Challenge into the Class 3 lead and 10th place overall. And so, for the final time, Danny Harrison negotiated clearways in the VR Motorsport Praga. 
a second race victory of the weekend for Danny Harrison and Jem Hepworth. And still the battles went on. Gary Townsend crossed the line just 1.1 seconds clear of Andy Schultz. Ollie Hancock, an excellent fourth in the BMW. And coming out of the final corner, the yellow Tyrannis just had enough grunt to get back ahead of the Praga. Fifth place to McGregor. So a thoroughly entertaining race ended with a third consecutive 1-2 finish for the VR Motorsports Pragas. To come in with a one-point lead in the championship and to come away with a clean sweep, it's definitely done us um, a world of favours going into uh, Alton Park. Race one went amazingly, very, very clean sweep, but yeah, race two was a bit scary, but we got back out there and we proved that we can really do it. The Dunlop Endurance Championship next heads to Alton Park for rounds five and six.